friends, it's Deanna here today. And today we're gonna to be working on the kids' Dutchie jacket. It is super cute. I am a little nervous to tell you the truth because there are so many things on this jacket that can seem a little intimidating. But we're gonna take our time, do it slowly, work through it together, and we've got it. So let's do it. <laughs> All right, so if you're doing welt pockets, that's what we're going to start with. I put all my pieces kind of uh, together, so that way, like with my pattern piece, that way they would stay together because you know you don't want them coming apart. I am going to steam my woven fabric, and actually, you probably should have steamed it before you cut it. I steamed some of it, and then I forgot to steam the rest. But I'm gonna grab my pocket well pocket strips if you're not doing well pockets you can skip this part um, or you can just go ahead and watch it for next time if you decide to do the well pockets but I'm gonna fold the well pocket strip in half long ways and steam I am using this like almost like jean like fabric but it's light it's not super super heavy um, so yeah, that's what I'm using, but you can use really any kind of woven fabric you want to use. I'm trying to figure out which one's the right side and the wrong side. And I've got, I got this fabric actually from Walmart. It was on sale and it's like a heavy duty fabric. And I was like, oh, let's get it. And now I'm like glad I got it because I think this would be great. I'm going to go ahead and grab my pocket and grab a ruler and I'm going to measure a quarter, three, three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And that's where my... Well, pocket's gonna go. The folded part is gonna go towards the inside of the bodice. This is the, the front of the bodice. This is my arm size, so this is my outer. And the folded raw edges are gonna go towards the side seams. And I'm gonna also measure three quarters of an inch from the edge, and that's where my raw edge is gonna hit. So if you were to measure all the way out to the outer edge of your welt pocket, um, piece it would be two inches so you want to make sure that you're precise on your measuring of the welt pocket because you don't want it to be eaten by your side seam when you go to sew your side seams together you don't want to close that pocket shot so that's something you have to be very careful of so now I'm going to go ahead and pin it obviously with uh, I love clips but when we're using like sewing on the inside we got to use some pins so I'm like trying to bring the pins back. I don't have that many anymore because I don't use them very often. Okay, so now we're gonna base this um, pocket strip onto our outer bodice. Um, you can use, if you're using a knit fabric for this pocket um, flap, you can hand stitch it for easier uh, hand, hand basted um, if you feel like it's stretching out on you. Um, I'm just going to go over to my sewing machine. I am going to do a long basting stitch. My sewing machine, the basting stitch is a size 4 or 5. I think it's a size 5. Some go to 5, some go to 6, whatever it is. And we're going to remove that basting stitch later. So we're just going to baste that pocket on so it doesn't move when we go to our next step. And I'm going to do the same for the other side as well. Now that, 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 now that that's top stitch, I almost could not get that out. I literally tried like four times. Now that that's topped, now that that is top stitched, we're gonna grab our liner. Now remember, if you're doing welt pockets, you will have a liner for your welt pocket and then you have the other liner. So this is my liner for my welt pocket. We're gonna go ahead and feel where my pocket flap things gonna put it over here we're gonna feel where those end and it's right here I'm marking it with a water soluble pen and then right here and then I'm gonna measure from the from that mark I'm gonna measure up three quarter inches a three quarter inch in market this little piggy went to market and then I'm gonna do the same on the other side and then I'm gonna come from the outer edge, I'm gonna measure in an inch and a quarter. Ah! Ruler just gave out on me. Come on. 
Okay, an inch and a quarter. Mark an inch and a quarter. All the way up to that other line. And I'm going to mark that. And now we're going to go ahead and sew from those marks that you made. You're going to sew a straight line right there. You got to make sure that your all your things are lined up correctly when you measure it though, which mine were. And then and we're going to do the same for both sides. We're going to do that for both pockets, like the both sides and go sew like a regular stitch. I usually do like a two and a half, um, something like that, straight stitch. Make sure when you're sewing this, you start and you do a back stitch, and then you go and do a back stitch at the end as well. My thread broke because my, uh, thread spool holder thingy it's got like very like non smooth edges and it keeps getting cut on it so I'm gonna try it again if not then I'm gonna have to go find some other thread because it was not being very smooth when it was going through so it broke All right, there's that stitch. I'm gonna turn it around and remove my basting stitch very carefully. All right, once that basting stitch is removed, your pocket should look like this. This is what your welt pocket right here is getting ready to look like. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and open, grab it again. And from that mark that we made earlier, the inside mark, so here's the outer mark where my pockets end up, right here, one end and the other end. And then remember we want a quarter inch, three quarters of an inch in right here. Now we're gonna go measure from there and go in a whole inch. So I'm gonna mark a whole inch from there and then a whole inch from the other edge. So here are my two inch, inch from the edges where we sewed up. Okay, and now I'm gonna go up from that mark, what? from the edge right here on that mark, half an inch. So half an inch, it's right there. And then half an inch right here is right there. And then we're gonna draw a line. Now this needs to be, you need to make sure that it's very well measured. So make sure that you're measuring correctly and um, because you want to have this area when you you don't want to sew your pocket shot So you want to make sure that you measure it correctly, and then we're going to go up from that point up to the corner Make sure it's an inch it is an inch up to the corner And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side up to that corner Okay, so now you got this little like shape right there, and then we're going to go ahead and cut <laughs> so scary. We're gonna cut up and over and we're gonna get as close to the thread without actually trimming, cutting the, the, the thread. We don't wanna cut the thread, so we wanna go as close as possible without cutting the thread. Going up, we're going over. All right, we gotta make sure we cut it really, really close to the thread without actually cutting the thread okay and then when we open it up so this is my outer that's my liner so here it is opened up now like the wrong sides together now the outer and the liner all right so there they are and the closer you cut to the stitch the better this will look right here I'm going to fold this up now so that this one comes down see there's the one flap and, and the other one comes down as well. So fold it up and comes down. And you can see now I'm gonna match up the liner and the outer flap right there. And I'm gonna go right here at that corner point and stitch all the way out. So make sure that you give it a back stitch right here and at the end. And we're just sewing it straight right there, sewing them shut, basically. You're gonna be sewing through the welt pocket 
and the liner and the outer right there. We're just sewing straight out. And I'm gonna do the same for the top as well. Turn it up. Turn it up. Okay, and they're matched up together right here. Those outer edges, outer raw edges are matched up. And then from the center, we're sewing out, straight out. Cloop. And we're gonna do that for both sides of the welt pockets. Obviously for this welt pocket as well as the other welt pocket. So I still have to do my marking on this one. Again, an inch from the edge. An inch from the edge. And then a half an inch from the bottom. This ruler is kind of long. So it's kind of annoying to do it, it's like hitting me in the face. And then out, mark out, loop, straight, mark out, loop, straight. Make sure you go to the point, okay? And cut it. It's nice to use these kind of really sharp uh, scissors because it can get you like really to the point without cutting it okay so now we're gonna open it again I just I'm just showing you again how to how this goes because it is kind of confusing uh, don't mind my stitching right here I had I had made a mistake and I stitched it the wrong way first though I told you all how to do it I went and did it the wrong way I don't know why and I'm gonna pull these up these little flaps flappity flappies out okay now I'm gonna pull it up so that the flap is facing the right side of the flap is facing the right side of the other flap so now they're both facing right sides together so they're both folded to like right sides together and folded right side together the outer and the liner and then we're gonna sew from that stitch all the way out I hope that's making sense. Ow! Spinned myself. Here we're doing it again at the top. Flip those out so that when we're folded, so here's the front, I'm gonna fold it down. That flap is straight up, see that? Okay, and now the liner, I'm gonna fold it down. That flap is straight up, see that? Because now I can see my marks on the back and then I'm gonna sew straight through. And I'm just gonna sew over there in my sewing machine with just a regular straight stitch. Remember we talked about doing a back stitch right here. Get started, back stitch a little bit so it doesn't come undone and let's go. All right, now we open it. And once we open it, it should look Right sides should look just like this. And this little gap right here should be a half an inch in width. Yay! I got it, okay. Um, as long as it's uh, at 3 eighths, I think it is, um, it says on your pattern, then you should be fine. But try to make it a half an inch because it's gotta be precise. So that way when you sew your edges like this, you still have the area where your pocket is not sewn shut. Um, so let me go ahead and steam that on both sides. Give it a good steamy to steam. Look how pretty that looks. And the other one, this is my outer. Okay, so this one I didn't clip as much, I think. So it's a little wobbly right here, but I think you'll be fine once I steam it and everything. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like you gotta make sure that you clip it all the way to the edge or it um, doesn't quite clip right. I shouldn't put my iron right there. I already had an accident with it. Okay, so then now I can go ahead and top stitch. Now this side, when I did my sew, my stitch right here, I didn't put my welt, uh, the top thing, they didn't pull all the way out straight. So if you can see, it's got like excess right here. So I'm gonna take that apart um, again where I, where we just sewed up 
I'm gonna take it apart and I'm just the reason why I'm showing you is because I don't want you to think that I I just I'm an expert and it's so everything comes effortlessly and I can't do it she can do it but I can't do it I'm uh, not true I mess up a whole lot and I just go back and fix it and then there's no need to get upset we'll just go back and and redo that little stitch right there make sure that it's nice and straight when I go to stitch it because that was my fault I didn't pull it nice and straight I was just kind of going for it so folded make sure that that's taunt and nice and straight so that way when I saw it is nice and straight right there so I'm gonna redo that and steam it then I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and top stitch around that edge to give it a very sleek look and then my pocket bags my facings I have thread everywhere I'm going to this rounded edge I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it off with like you could do it with your cover your serger I'm sorry or a zigzag stitch however if you want to finish that raw edge because wovens tend to fray so I don't want it to fray um, my serger is set on white thread right now and I think I'm just gonna leave it because my sleeves have like white on them white and gray so I'm gonna use the white and this is gonna be on the inside, so I, I don't think you can see it, so I'm just gonna leave it. Um, so I'm gonna do those two things right now. Much better, look at that. No, no wobble right there, just nice and straight. All right, those look so good. All right, I'm gonna turn it. In, uh, to the back this is the back of my the liner area and I'm using so what I'm using for the liner is a like it's a thinner fabric it still looks like jean but it's like very thin so it's nice because I don't want it to be super thick I live in South Georgia so it doesn't get super cold here um, so it, we don't need super thick jackets, so this is going to be great. Also, um, I made the jacket just a little bit bigger than my son's size right now because of the fact that um, by the time, he's been growing so fast right now, by the time that winter hits, he's probably gonna be up a couple sizes. So I went up one size, because it's right, he's kind of right at the edge. Um, so if even if it's a little bit big right now, I'd rather be a little bit big right now and fit really nicely by that time. My pockets are, I don't know what I'm doing. My pockets are finished. There we go. Okay. That's how it goes. I don't know what the heck I'm doing over here. Okay. And, um, you want the sides to flush the two sides, top and bottom. And then I'm going to pin right here along this rainbow curve, curvy curve. And I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and do a basting stitch right over it. And the reason why I want to do that is because I'm going to sew it on, but I want to sew it from the right side. And you can do it with uh, decorative stitches, you can do whatever you want. But in order to be able to tell where I'm going to sew, instead of just kind of feeling around for it, because I'm going to go sewing from the top, I don't want it to be like, what, all weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in that basting stitch and then come back and follow the basting stitch. So I know exactly where I need to go. It's just a marking basically is what the basting stitch is going to do. And then from then, uh, after I do that basting stitch, I'm going to turn it around and sew right over that, like a one eighth of an inch away from the basting stitch and then one eighth of an inch inside. I mean, how many stitches do you want to do? If you want to do two rows of stitches, you want to do three rows of stitches, you want to do four rows of stitches, you want to do zigzag stitches, you want to do your cover stitch, you want to do uh, decorative stitches with little flowers on them, whatever kind of stitch you want to do. You want to do a blind stitch, you don't want to see it, so you just want to do something very, very light. It is all up to you right here. Um, so what I'm doing first, like I said, basting stitch, and then I'm gonna go back. I'm, I think I'm just gonna go do, do the, the two stitches. It's just the, what do you call it? Like the usual, the huge. Um, so I'll probably, that's probably what I, I am going to do. And we're gonna do that for both sides. Make sure, I'm making sure that my liner and my outer are lined up correctly because I don't want to sew it up with the liner and outer crooked. So um, I just want to mention that. All 
All right, so let me show you. There's my basting stitch, as you can see it right there. And that I can pull really easily. So now I can go back and right next to it, do my regular straight stitch on either side of it so I can get um, a nice straight stitch to close in that pocket right there. But I'm gonna do the other one first before I switch my stitch to a, uh, a small stitch, a regular stitch. All right, now I can remove that basting stitch and then do my other stitch right next to it. That's gonna look so cool. Oh, look at how cute. We are done with our welt pocket. See right here. You know, this will be sewn onto the waistband and the side. But that's gonna look so cool. Again, this could be, you could do anything with it. Decorative stitches, however you wanna do it will be awesome possum. All right, moving on to chest pockets. If you were doing the wall pockets and you were just doing the regular pockets, you would just fold, put in the interfacing, fold in the sides, and then sew it on um, like you would um, other kind of patch pockets. Um, but this time we're moving on to the chest pockets. First thing we gotta do is we're gonna grab our pockets and we're gonna put our interfacing on there as per instructions on your interfacing. All right, then we're gonna grab our pocket, our, uh, and we're gonna place it right sides together, like the pocket top, right sides together. And we're going to sew the side, the down to the pointy, up and over. We're not gonna sew the top because we're, we're gonna turn it around. So we're just gonna sew down, over, up, basically, okay, I have to make the sound. Does that make it easier to understand when I make the, the sound effects? <laughs> You're just like, okay, I'm sorry. And we're also gonna prep the bottom of the pockets. What we're gonna do is we're going to uh, serge the raw edges or zigzag stitch to finish the raw edges and then fold them in and top stitch all the way around to have that uh, pocket ready. Now, if you want just one, if you're just gonna want one line of stitches, then you might not wanna top stitch. You, wanna, you might wanna fold and use like some, like, steam a seam or something like that to keep it down because then when you go to sew it on you're gonna make that line but I actually like the look of the two stitching lines so I'm gonna fold it down and do one stitch all the way around and then when I stitch it on I'm going to do a second line of stitches all the way around and I'm fine with that so that's what I'm gonna do for that and for this oh yeah after I sew it I'm gonna turn it right side out you know what, I'll show you because I'm gonna come over here and steam it anyway, so. All right, so we can grab some clips or some shearing scissors and we can trim all these edges, all these extra little uh, corners. So it's nice and flush when we turn it around. Don't cut the thread though, remember. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn it flip it over and we're gonna go poke all these edges out oop I guess I missed this side I gotta redo that one let's hope I did this one right we turn all the edges and use something I'm just using this right now to poke oop, the points out and then we'll steam it We'll go back to our saw machine and we'll top stitch it. And then we'll also go ahead and add our buttonholes. Or if you're doing snaps, then you go ahead and put your top snap on there so that way when you put it on, it's already on there. So it's easier to make a buttonhole and everything before you attach it. Um, because after you attach it, it'll be, you know, just this little piece of fabric and you'll have your whole jacket. It'll be kind of hard. Um, so it's best if you do it now. So I'm going to go ahead and I really don't know what kind of button I'm going to do. If I'm just going to do a regular button or something, I'm going to look through my buttons and figure it out. 
so that way I can make my buttonhole or if I'm gonna do a snap then I'll just add the snap then I'm gonna also grab my pocket the bottoms of my pockets and those are the ones I surged I'm gonna grab them and turn them turn that seam up a quarter inch and steam it and I'm gonna do that for all the sides and then I'm gonna go over there and top stitch them down on my sewing machine. So we'll make the buttonhole and we'll top stitch these around. All right, so I could not find any buttons I really, really liked to put on here. So I'm just going to do snaps or if I do end up finding buttons because um, we just moved and I don't have all my stuff out yet. If I do end up button, finding buttons, then I might just do the lazy way around and turn it into just a pretend pocket and um, just a pretend button so I'll just attach the button but I won't actually do the button hole and it'll just kind of look like it's a pocket but it won't this way but it won't be um, it won't be something that you can close and that'll be fine it'll be our secret <laughs> and if you're afraid of doing pocket uh, button holes and you don't really want to I'll keep your secret too Okay, but then before, if you are doing buttons, before you place the button on your pocket, make sure you use your uh, guide on your pattern piece and you place your pocket. Sometimes what I like to do is I'll grab my pattern piece and I'll cut out where the pocket's going to be. That way I can see where I'm supposed to be putting it. Like so. So then I'll be able to put this on here, put my pocket where it's supposed to go, and then put the flap right on top. Oop, my pocket, I keep putting it on the wrong way. Make sure I put it right in this right place. Grab my flap, put it right at the edge where it's supposed to go, and then mark it where your buttonhole is make up put a dot on there so you can mark it and then attach your button it's easier like I said earlier it's easier to attach it onto your uh, pocket before you actually sew it on it's kind of harder to do it once you sew it on especially if you're used to doing it with a sewing machine instead of just by hand by hand you'll be fine I'm gonna trim all these little threads right here that are trying to poke out that way they don't poke out once I put it on and then I'm going to go ahead and measure my pocket again and attach it. Your pocket should be 5 eighths away from the top. So we'll attach the sides and the bottom. Obviously not the top because that's where you will put through. And then we're going to grab our flap and we're going to put it right along that top edge, right along the edge where your pocket is and we're going to baste it on. So we'll pin it on. I don't know where my clips went. And then we'll go over to our sewing machine and we'll baste it on. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach your pockets and our pocket, baste our pocket top on. This is where um, you could use, if you wanted to, you could use that um, hand tape and put some on it, on the inside, around the edges, and steam it on, and then it won't move when you go to sew it on. Or you can just use pins, it's up to you. Um, but that makes it super easy to sew on. I, I'm also going to make sure I measure on the outside to make sure my pocket is straight. I want a straight pocket. Okay, so I'm gonna sew down over and up, and then I'm gonna baste the flap right along that edge. It's gonna be super cute. All right, now that that pocket is basically done, our fronts are basically done, we're gonna go ahead and grab, whoop, 
and grab our top pieces. Make sure it's the right side. This is this is the right side up. This is the right side up. Okay, there's one side. And here's the other one. Okay. Let me make sure I put these on the right side. So this is how they go as I'm looking at them. And let me make sure I put these on the right side. So if you look at them, if you put it right on top of each other, you'll see this is the straight part, this is the neckline, shoulder seam, arm side all the way down. The same for the other side. Straight part, neck, I mean, yeah. Arm side, neck, straight part. So make sure that you're looking at it correctly. And if you're kind of wondering, do I have it correctly? Grab your pattern piece and put it right on top. I'm gonna grab it and show you all. And make sure that you put it right on top so you know exactly, yes, this is the way that you, I need to put it on. Don't just go for it because sometimes I go for it and, yeah, regret it. Instant regret. So what we're going to do is now that they're lined up properly, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to flip it right on top so they're matched right sides together at this raw edge up here. And I'm going to sew them together. Um, I am going to do a straight stitch first with my quarter inch seam allowance and then I'll go over and finish it off with my serger or and your zigzag stitch whatever you're working with to finish off that raw edge and then um, once we finish those we're gonna steam them up steam the seams away from the body and top stitch it down and then if you're doing buttons instead of zipper, you might want to go ahead and mark where your buttons are going to go now using your pattern, your markers on your pattern. So let's go do that. You can also go ahead and remove that basting stitch that you, uh, that you put in earlier. That way it'll be out of the way and you're not like, what is that? Um, so. You can do that and then I'm going to go over and just top stitch right along that edge. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and grab our back piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my back piece face up on my mat. Make sure that it's the right side. See, it's so hard to tell with this fabric which one's the right side and which one's the wrong side. And I'm going to place my top piece right on top of right sides together. And we're going to sew at the shoulder seams and also at the side seams. Now, because we did welt pockets, we need to be sure, make sure when we're sewing those side seams that we um, don't catch our pocket closed. So we need to make sure that all the seams are correct. You don't want to catch that pocket right there. Um, you should be fine if you keep your seam allowance, but you just want to be very careful as you're sewing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in and sew with my sewing machine, just straight stitch, and then I'll go back and um, finish it off with my serger. So after I do my straight stitch, I'm gonna go open up my jacket and make sure that I didn't catch my pocket or anything like that, and then go serger. Cause you know, actually, sometimes serger stitches are easier to take off than sewing stitches, but. You know what I mean. You just want to make sure that you didn't catch anything that you're not supposed to. And we're going to do that for our outer and then we're going to grab our liner and do the same thing for the liner on the shoulders and the side seams, right sides together. Perfect. All right, now if you want to add a little loop to the back of your coat, um, you can cut a little strip of fabric to the three and a half inches by two inches, fold it down the middle, right sides together, I mean wrong sides together, then go into the middle, the two edges, the two raw edges go to the middle. It's kind of like a little binding piece. So if you have binding and you just want to use binding, you can totally do that. Then you fold it right back on itself 
and we basically created a double fold binding. Then we're gonna go ahead and sew up that straight stitch right here, sew that shot. Then we'll fold it closed and we'll go ahead and pin it to the back of our, to the right side, I'm sorry, of our liner piece. Oh goodness, look at that. I cut my liner front on a solid. I didn't cut it on the fold. I mean, I cut it on the fold instead of cutting it straight, so I'll just have to fix that. But anyway, uh, you would attach it to the back of your liner, right sides together, and um, then uh, baste it on so that it stays on there. You don't lose it for later when we go to sew the two pieces together. I'm going to go over here and cut my liner open. Um, I don't know why I did that. And then I didn't notice it. You all were probably yelling at me like, Diana, please, cut your liner. Don't you know? Yeah, I know better, but I didn't do better. You all see, I make the silliest mistakes sometimes. All right, I'm gonna go cut this. I'm gonna base that on. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on to our color. All right, I'm going to be doing the regular color. I'm not doing the knit color. I'm doing the regular color with the hood as well. Um, my fabric is not super thin, so I am not adding uh, interfacing, but if you are, you would add it to the wrong side of the color uh, and steam it down, and then we would go ahead. So what I wanna do is I'm putting my, the reason why I'm putting my pattern back on there, because I want to see where the top of my color is, because that's what we're sewing together. So I don't want to get confused and sew the wrong side of the color. You see how these kind of poke out a little bit, go like kind of in a shape, that's the top of the color. Uh, but you know, again, I, I do this all the time. If I am not sure, I grab my pattern piece and I put it right on top so I can tell exactly what my tops are and what not because I want to make sure that I'm sewing it correctly. The worst thing is to get to the end of a sewing project and realize you sewed it on backwards or whatever. Done it before and that's why I'm saying it stinks. <laughs> I'm gonna go and sew this right along the edge, not along the edge, I'm sorry. We're gonna sew it down with a quarter inch seam allowance and then we're gonna uh, cut the edges and trim down your seam allowance and then flip it around, steam it and top stitch it. Kind of like we did our pocket um, but with our color. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and grab my hoods, uh, my liner and my outer hood and we're gonna put it right sides together and match that crown all the way around and sew that together. I'm going to sew that on my serger because this is knit fabric, um, but if you don't have a serger and you're doing a uh, uh, zigzag stitch, a triple stitch, any kind of stretch stitch on your sewing machine will work. Excellent. Um, so let's do that. I am sewing with air. Yay! Alright, so now trim those edges. If I can find my clipping scissors, I can't, so I'm just going to use these regular scissors. And you can trim your seam allowance. Then you can turn it. Gonna use this little guy to poke out those edges really nicely. And then I'm gonna give it a little steam real quick. And I'll come back over here to top stitch it all the way around. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my hood and turn it right side out. And then I'm gonna grab my other one and fit it right into it right sides together and we're going to sew the outside of the hood together so i'm going to match up that top uh seam and then i'm going to go all the way around the front to the neck area raw edges right sides together and i'm going to sew all the way around and then all the way around to the other side now um i'm going to go ahead and answer a couple questions because i know i'm going to get these questions so okay First off, 
the knit fabric that I'm using is French Terry. It's super soft and cozy. Uh, this is from Raspberry Creeks. Um, I love it. It's, it's so soft. Um, the fabric I'm using for the actual jacket, it's like a, like a very light stretch denim. Um, but I got it from, I think it's Hobby Lobby. I've had it for a little while. Um, no, 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 no. Actually, I got it from Walmart. It was one of those bundles that, um, you, you know, you go in there and look and sometimes there's something, sometimes there's not. Um, so that's that. The What I'm wearing, this is a double brush poly rumper mesh. Um, I have the Everyday Tea matched with the South Shore Rumper bottoms and a video on that is going to be coming soon if it's not already posted, I'm trying to remember. Anyway, and then um, the fabric came from Olga's Closet um, Fabrics and um, it's super nice. Um, and then another question that I've got and I know I might get it again is um, where is my baby lock serger? So yes, I did get a new baby lock serger, which I love. I, right before the move, because I just moved uh, to a new house, right before I, the move, I think with I broke a needle and I think it went stray and it knocked my air threading. Um, and so that needs to get fixed in order for me to be able to air thread. So I'm getting that fixed. So meanwhile, I've got my trusty old dandy um, sir, uh, brother serger, which works just fine. Um, so yes, the baby lock is still good. It's just um, it has some minor things I did to it. So... Yeah, it's gotta get fixed. So anyway, <laughs> let's keep going. I'm going to sew shot that hood, but um, because I am doing the zipper version on this tutorial, we're gonna move on to doing um, the zipper first before we attach the color and the hood. Um, if you're doing the button version, you will attach the color and the hood first before you do uh, the buttons. Um, but we'll come back to this in after we do our zipper just like if you're doing the knit the short knit color you will also do this the other stuff first and then come back to it all right so now i've got my waistband i'm gonna grab the waistband um the patches front patch for the waistband and put it right sides together at those raw edges and i'm gonna sew them together after i sew them together at that raw edge, I'm gonna flip it open, steam it, and top stitch it. So flip it open, steam it, top stitch it. Well, you don't have to top stitch if you don't want, but top stitching, I think to me, makes it look more finished and put together. I also went ahead and finished the raw edge with my cover, my serger, I'm sorry, or you can finish it with your uh, zigzag stitch or whatever. Grabbing my main jacket, my jacket. I'm gonna find the middle point of my jacket by grabbing my two side seams and going to the back and then just kind of marking it a little bit with a little notchety notch. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the waistband. I'm gonna fold it right sides together and find the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and place that middle that I marked together, match them up at that raw edge at the bottom, right sides together. And we're gonna go to one side, stretching lightly so that it fits. And I'm just gonna kind of pin everywhere so that way it fits nicely right there. And we're gonna sew that bottom raw edge of the jacket together. I'm going to go ahead and do um, uh, my serger on this and then um, if you want to do it with your sewing machine first and then uh, finish it off with the serger you can do that it is up to you whatever you want to do or zigzag stitch uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it with my serger and then we're gonna steam it and top stitch it after that and I am gonna go ahead and probably just top stitch it with my uh, a regular stitch on my sewing machine. Alright, now I'm going to grab 
the bottom and I'm going to uh, steam my allowance towards the bodice and then I'm going to go over and top stitch. I have to stand up for this one. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna repeat the same steps, but this time with the liner. So I'm gonna find the half again of my uh, waistband. And again, it's easier when I stand up because of being so long. I'm gonna grab my liner and find the, the back of the liner and mark it. So then I'm going to put my liner down. The reason why I put my liner down is because I have to stretch the waistband just a tiny bit. So I want it to be on top so I have better handling skills. And then we're going to all the way down. Attaching those raw edges just like we did with our outer. I'm super excited about this jacket. It's looking so good. So good, such a great pattern. All right, let's sew it first. I'm gonna serge it and then I'm gonna open it up, steam it towards the liner and top stitch it just like I did with my uh, other side. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna grab our jacket, we're gonna fold this bottom placket in half because that's where and we're gonna mark it mm. here's my little handy dandy washable marker because that's where our zipper we're, we're gonna start sewing our zipper on because we only want it to go obviously to half of the jacket we don't want it to go to the liner and that's what we're going to use to measure our zipper. So our zipper has got to end right there. And then at the top, you have to have three eighths of an inch right here to attach your color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my zipper down. Whoa, that's stuck on the cloth. Move my zipper down, measure from the bottom where it's supposed to end all the way up. And right there is where it finishes. So I can cut my zipper right there and then remove some of my teeth of my zipper. And because this is a uh, plastic zipper, I can, um, I wanna leave, when I remove, there, we have a video on here on our YouTube channel on how to remove the teeth of your zipper, so you wanna check that out. Um, but I wanna leave, I don't wanna cut it all the way down, I wanna leave a little bit at the top so that way I can turn it in and t sew it down when I'm done. Um, I like to, so let me show you. If you can remove that zipper stopper and put it down here, that's great. If not, it'll be fine because you can just stitch a stopper with your like thread, just stitch it over. Just watching our video will be helpful. Uh, but also, you are going to flip this, you wanna leave a little bit of tape at the end because you're gonna flip it under like so and stitch it, stitch it, stitch it down so that your zipper doesn't just come flying out anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna trim my trim my zipper and remove the zipper teeth that are too much for mine, and then we'll come back to um, sew it on. But this is looking so good. I'm so excited. All right, as you can see, there's teeth everywhere. I this poor zipper. <laughs> it's all pull apart. I did do the little. Um, I could not get the stopper out and back on, so I just did the with the thread at the end, my own stopper. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and separate my zipper and I wanna make sure, so I'm gonna place it like it's supposed to be, right? Cause this is the front of my jacket. This is how my zipper is gonna end up looking right here. So I'm gonna tilt it so it's right sides together. So here is where my end is, where I made that mark at the bottom where half of my bottom piece is. And I'm going to pin it with a 3 8 seam allowance for my zipper. And at the top where my zipper starts, that needs to be 3 8 away from the top. That's where my stopper is going to be. 
So then when I, I'm gonna go over to my saw machine and baste my sipper on first. We wanna baste it on first um, and then make sure that it looks good before we sew up things together. But I'm gonna start here at the top, right below, right next to my sipper stopper. So you wanna leave that space where you're going to attach your color. So don't um, sew right over that space, leave that space. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Here's my other side of my jacket. This is how it's gonna be like this. So I'm gonna flip it right sides. I did not mark my half right here. Let's mark it. Let's do a little a notch. Okay, and then that's where it's going to start. And I'm gonna go all the way up along that raw edge to where my zipper stopper is. And then now I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and baste my zipper on. All right, I have a zipper foot in here somewhere. And there's also a video about how attach, to attach a zipper. Releasing my other foot. If you see a zipper foot, it's got like space for you to be able to go right up to it um, with your like kind of like your zipper so that your needle will go like basically right up to it so we're gonna go ahead and put a basting stitch in but I want my needle over over all the way Move over. You know what? If I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna take it off and put it on this side. Because I'm gonna sew this side first. Okay. So I'm gonna start over basting stitch. I'm gonna start over at right in front of my zipper stopper. go down and baste it on. Y'all, I'm not doing this right. We want this to be over on this side. We want my needle on the other side. There we go. That way, it will get it right on there along the edge. But you know what? I'm gonna finish it up the other way right now because I already started the other way. I want the same seam allowance. When you get to where your zipper is, you wanna move it up, your zipper stopper, move it out of the way, leave your needle down so it'll stay down. Come on, it's not that far up. You can do it. Okay, well, it won't, help. It won't do it, so we're gonna to have to wait till I get over here. All right, let's try one more time. All right. I guess this zipper was thicker than I would think. All right. My zipper is basted on. That was a struggle. Y'all, I am, I don't know what's going on with me, but anyway, there's my zipper on one side. Now I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And now that I've got it all set up, I can start from this side. That way I'm not gonna move it at all. You all are probably like, what kind of tutorial is this? <sighs> because the zipper foot has this edge over here. That's what's keeping you from going onto the zipper. Oh, I went all the way up instead of stopping where my zipper stops right there, but I'll just have to take that basting stitch off for that edge right there. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our zippers align up. So you can go ahead and fold it and put your zipper on, zip it up, make sure everything lines up correctly. And it's looking good. It looks really good. 
I'm gonna open it back up open it up if it doesn't look good then you can take that basting stitch off and start over now we're gonna fold it so that my uh, liner is right side with my outer here it is right there and we're going to go ahead and place them fold that zipper into the inside and we're gonna put the right side of my jacket to the wrong side of the zipper and we're going to pin our clip because we're going to sew those together. Make sure they're aligned. See, there is my outer, here's my liner, they're right sides together right here, and the zipper is sandwiched between those two. And now we can go ahead and just do a regular stitch and sew our zipper right along the, um, the zipper line. I almost knocked my clips down. There it is, let's go sew it. I'm going back and forth right there so that to make sure that it's stuck on there right. All right, we already figured out that I cannot move that zipper stopper without, oh my goodness, I've been sewing without bobbin thread again. Built it up almost most of the way now because I don't want to run out again. So I'm hoping this time it lasts me the whole rest of my project. All right. All right. Since I um, have to redo that part, I'm gonna move my zipper stopper all the way to the part that we already that got that had some uh, thread still on my bobbin. That way I don't have to come back and move it again. All right, and now I'm gonna restitch that. All right, now we're gonna turn it around. Cross our fingers and hope that everything came out right. And then um, if it did, we're gonna go back and which it looks like it looks so good. I am so excited. This is like such a neat project and I am loving how it's looking. Like sometimes, honestly y'all, sometimes when I do woven patterns because I am such a like, let's just get it done and over with kind of person, I get to a point where I'm just like, eh, and I start kind of just messing up and um, I'm not like very pleased with what I've done, I've accomplished, but I'm telling you, this is looking so good. I am so pleased. I'm gonna steam this down a little bit and then I'm gonna go back and top stitch at the edge of my zipper because we don't want the zipper to get caught on the fabric if it comes up, so we wanna top stitch that down. So I'm gonna steam it and top stitch it. One side is done. Now the other side. <sighs> My thread keeps breaking. You know why? Because this is not very nice thread. When you're using thicker layers, uh, you need to make sure that you have some good thread that's going to stand up to that and I don't have the thread in my sewing machine right now so this is why this keeps happening I said I don't know what I'm doing um, I realized what I'm doing I know what I'm doing I don't know why I think I don't know what I'm doing I know what I'm doing I know what's going on I know what I'm doing wrong I got the wrong thread the wrong type of thread you all, we are done with the hardest parts of this tutorial. <sighs> you can breathe a sigh of relief. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and attach our color. Now, obviously, if you did the um, other the buttons, then your color is already attached because you attached the color first, and then um, 
then your buttons, but because I did zipper, I have to do my zipper first, but if you're coming here to see the color attached, this is the same way that you would attach it if you had the buttons. So I'm gonna mark my half of my color. Color, color, color. I'm gonna mark the half of my bodice. Her first my bodice. And then I'm going to grab my bodice. Oh, there's my other scissors. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to match my color, the right side of my color, which is the side that I like the best, to my pin. Now you can go ahead and grab your uh, pattern and make sure that you line up to the stars. It's going to be about an inch away from the edge of your end. And then I'm going to do the same to, towards the other side. I am only attaching it to the outer right now because then we're going to attach the outer and the liner together once we have the hood and everything to close off right here this raw edge where the zipper is. So I'm going to go ahead and baste, just going to baste this color on real quick over on my sewing machine. Okay. So my color is basted on. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it down and grab my hood and then do the same thing. I'm gonna put that right side, that middle seam to the middle seam where my color ends and then I'm gonna go to one side. I'm not stretching or anything. I'm just going right up to, right to the side. It doesn't go all the way to the end of the color. You have a gap at the end. Um, you can look for your stars and mark it, but it's just, you're basically just going over to the outer to the edge of the color. Now I'm going to sew it on. All right, now what I wanna do, just kind of getting rid of some of these things. I wanna make sure, and I, I, I'm so proud of myself. I wanna make sure that it all matched up and it all looks good when you open it up so it's not like coming undone or you didn't catch it all the way. And now I'm going to do a sandwich. So I'm going to turn it inside out. And I'm going to do a outer and a liner sandwich, basically. So see where that little knot, the little tie hang thing is? That's going to go right at the back of our hood. And then clip that. You can have a lot of layers. And you're going to go all the way out to the outer catching your zipper tape and everything over here, catching all the layers. You wanna make sure, you might wanna go sew it first with your sewing machine and then finish the edge off with a serger or zigzag stitch, whatever you wanna do um, to finish that off. Um, I, I gotta say this, and I'm gonna say this, I, this is probably, I'm like getting emotional. I don't know why, you all, I'm a mess. I am so proud of this sew, and I hope you are as well. I, I was so, you don't have any idea how intimidated by this sew I was. I don't know why, you, you may say, you sew all the time, you know, you should be used to all these techniques and whatever, no, I, I get overwhelmed very easily sometimes, but also I I struggle with sewing certain things sometimes. Zippers, wovens, getting them just all even to match up, and welt pockets. I was so scared to start this project, but I told myself, get out there and do it. And here I am now, almost finished, doing the last few steps. This is looking so great, and I literally am so proud. Now, there's been other projects where I've been terrified of, but for some reason, this just looks so good. So far, I am just like, wow. Like, I'm, I know, you all are all like, get over yourself, you know? I'm sorry, but I hope you feel the same way, and I hope that my tutorial has helped you feel more confident with your sewing. Um, I love hearing the comments when my tutorial has helped you uh, with a piece that you're struggling with, and 
I just, I, I feel like talking it out with you all helps me too. Um, so it's like we're helping each other and um, I just enjoy it. So thank you for coming along with me. Anyway, so let's continue. While I'm sewing that neck, I'm also going to go ahead and sew up my sleeves. Um, I'm gonna sew them right sides together right here so that I, um, they're gonna be inset sleeves. So we're gonna put them right sides together and sew the outer edge. And I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and mark my top already because I know I'm gonna need that when I go to put them on. I just wanted to go ahead and, and, and get them done right now. That way, once I'm done with that, I'll be able to go ahead and put the sleeves in and then we'll do the cuffs and then we'll be done. That is exciting. Like I said, I'm sewing it on my sewing machine first because um, I want to be able to open it up and make sure that it's all good in the neighborhood before I surge it on. Taking my time because it is a thicker layer. I've got a lot going on in this sandwich. And I told you this thread is not very good thread so it is like nope that is one sandwich I'm not trying to eat right now oh you will though you will eat this sandwich all right so make sure that it is all cut the back the front your two layers and I'm gonna go over my serger While I'm here, I'm also going to grab my cuffs, put them right sides together, and I'm going to sew them to create a continuous cuff. So that way we can just go over there and attach it and be done. All right, we're going to turn this around. We're going to grab it through our sleeve and carefully turn our jacket around. I'm going to poke out that corner where the zipper is. And then we can go back and top stitch right here if you want to. Kind of around where the zipper ends and all the way around. I might. I might not because first of all, I don't want to mess it up. I'm scared to mess it up. I don't think I will. But, but also because it's really thick right here and I don't know how my sewing machine will react to that. Might break a couple needles, but maybe I will. Look at this though. Oh my goodness. Isn't this the coolest thing ever? This is looking so cool. I am like obsessed with it. It's looking so, so good. So good. Let's attach our sleeves and we'll be done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn, now that my sleeve is sewn together, I'm gonna turn it right side out and um well we can go ahead and attach the bands too so that way we're sewing the bands and the sleeves on at the same time and that's our last step can you believe it i'm excited can you tell i'm excited can you tell i'm like super excited about this sew i'm marking half on my sleeve because that way i know exactly what half is and that's where i'm going to pin it I am super excited about this. So right sides together, clip one side, clip the other, and then we'll just stretch to fit. Do the same for the other one. Okay, and I'll sew those on. When I sew it on at the same time, I'm gonna do it all. And so since I have my sleeve right side out, I'm going to fit it into my arm area and I'm going to grab the right side of the outer fabric. We're going to match those right sides together at armpit to armpit and then shoulder to shoulder. And make sure that you're attaching all the both layers, the liner and the outer. And then make sure that those sides match. and do the same for both sleeves. And then we'll go over and sew them on and also sew your 
cuffs. And that's it. We're done. I don't usually pin this much, but because we're going from a knit to a woven, I want to make sure that I my, I don't stretch out my knit or you know whatever and get so bumpy so that's why I'm pinning so much um, so it really is up to you plus also this looks so good I don't want to get here to the end now and mess it up because I'm being careless so I am not being careless in this project you all know I sometimes I just go for it and Today, I y'all need to tell me because I know we are proud of me <laughs> for taking our time and actually doing it slowly and doing it correctly. You know, like I don't know. Tell me, are you like me? Sometimes you get just get it a project done and you just get it done and that's it. Let's get it done. Sometimes when I get in that mood, I have to walk away from a project and realize that is it worth it? If it's worth it, if it's a project that is worth it, I need to walk away and come back with a fresh mind. Because if I'm getting upset at a project and just kind of half doing it, it's not going to turn out right. So if I want a project to turn out right, I need to make sure that I'm fresh, my mind is fresh, and I am paying attention. So that's with this project, um, I was so proud of myself that I didn't just rush it. You know, fresh mind. I did take a couple of breaks, walk away for a minute. Don't do it while you're hangry <laughs> type of situation. And here we are on the home stretch. Super excited about it. Let's finish up strong. Y'all, we are done. Done, done, done. How cool is this jacket? All I have to do is put my fake buttons on because I think I'm just going to go with fake buttons. Trim all these little uh, pieces of thread that are everywhere. Look at that. <sighs> this is so so cool I love it so so much I am obsessed I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I'm gonna go try it on my son and take some pictures please comment like share subscribe if you haven't so you never miss any of our other tutorials uh, come find us on Facebook and Instagram we want to see what you're sewing up so you can inspire us and then we want you to see what everybody else is sewing so you can be inspired by them I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you are able to sew up so many things and then come back and show us. And again, subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you all next time. Bye.